Hi, how are you? Matt Watson here from CarWow. What is the performance difference between the new Toyota GR86 compared to the old Toyota GT86 compared to the OG, the AE86, over a standing quarter mile? Well, we're going to find out because I'm going to drag race all three cars. So let me tell you about the GR86. It has a 2.4 litre naturally aspirated four cylinder boxer engine that puts out 234 horsepower and five, no, not 500 newton meters of torque at all. Try half that. 250 newton meters of torque. Drives the rear wheels via a six speed manual gearbox. It's not actually that heavy, weighs 1,270 kilos, and the price, I think, is good value for money at 30,000 pounds. Though, good luck buying one they're all sold out, which means if you want to buy one, you have to pay somewhere a lot more than the list price. Anyway, let's find out about the GT86. And we've got a guest driver. It is Ben Collins, the former stick. Ben, how are you? I'm good, mate. I'm loving it in this little thing. I've got this Victorian handle, an original handbrake, manual transmission, six speed. This thing is a proper bit of kit. This is pretty much the same car, it's similar chassis, and they're just put a bigger engine in this. What engine's in your car? I've got this little two litre, four cylinder boxer engine popping out 200 horsepower, slightly more than that in newton meters, 205. With a light car like this, it's as much power as you need. Of course, the new car's bound to weigh more, isn't it? Not by much though, it's just like 30 kilos difference. Price-wise, I think when that was new, that's a 2015 car, it was like 25,000 pounds. Now you can pick one up for about 16,000 pounds. And do you know that AE86? That's as much as this, this brand new GR86. That's worth about 30,000 pounds now. That is an absolute diamond. Diamond. So I'd love to have a go in that at some point. So that's from 1985. It was about £9,000 for the equivalent version that we got in the UK. It's got a little 1.6 litre fuel injected engine, four cylinder, puts out 124 horsepower, 145 newton metres of torque. That car's a five speed manual gearbox driving the rear wheels. But the thing about that, lightness, 970 kilos. Impressive, but I still think he's going to get smoked. They'll have more traction, they've got more power. That GT's got you driving it. And you're a racing driver, so you should be able to launch it. The track is wet, but they haven't got loads of power, so hopefully it won't matter that much. Bit of um, feather control on the clutch. With this much horsepower, we're not going to be spinning the wheels for ages. Feather control on the clutch. What's that? Oh dear, I'm a bit worried now. I'm check, so I'm going to rev up this GR86. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah. I quite like the childish shift up like. Go on, you have a go. Surprise, surprise, the four cylinder boxer engines sound the same. <laughs> For some reason though, this sounds like it's more aggressive. I mean, I'm not going to be starting on the red line because it's wet, but were it dry, it could be a different story. So would you, if it was dry, would you just be right up there and then just dump the clutch? Quite possibly, yeah. So a lot of people are concerned about clutch dumpage. Is it actually better to dump the clutch than like feather it out? You get a bit of slip with it, but I reckon, yeah, you could be well high up, creeping on the clutch and then let the whole thing out in one. Okay, but now with the slippery surface, not so much. No, not so much, but I'm not going to tell you how many revs I'm using. Oh, oh, I need some tuition, Ben. Do you know what I forgot to do? Let's have a listen to the old AE86. Go on, rev it up. That's such a sweet sounding little twin cam engine. Really, really nice. Now, before we race, if you're thinking about selling your car, you can do it through CarWow. To find out more, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. All you have to do is upload some photos, give a brief description, then dealers all across the country will bid on your car. Then you just pick the highest offer. They'll come to your house, take the car away, put the money in your account. It is so easy. If you want to find out more about that at a later date, just simply Google Help Me CarWow and we will help you sell your car. And hopefully, God will help me win this race against Ben, the Stig, he's going to be way better at launching a manual car than me. Damn it, let's do it anyway. I'm not going to go with the dump clutch idea. I'm going to go with a nice smooth roll on. Three, two, one. Beat Ben off the line. Oh dear. That's a good time. Oh dear. It's a really good time. Woo! 
Not gonna lie, Ben, I absolutely destroyed you. You did, but you're gonna give me a second shot, aren't you? Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna do a better launch than that. That's the only problem. That was so good. <laughs> to me, it looked like a perfect launch. And then the power got going as well. I'd love to try something different with this one. So I had my traction off and that didn't really work very well because it wheel spun and then it bogged. So I might try something different. Ugh. Come on, you know you want to. Okay. Well, you're not going to talk about the A86, the OG, the granddad that was ahead of the GT at the 8th mile. What? Ben, you let yourself down. You got beaten off the blooming line by that old timer. I'm just going to head out of here. I think it's best. <laughs> I guess we've got to do it again. So, Ben, what I did, actually, I won't tell you what I did. You weren't going to tell me what you were going to do. So I'm going to keep my methodology secret. I think you're using revs and traction on wrong. I'm using it in sports, traction off and just pulling away. <laughs> he don't know that. I won't tell him. I want to win. Three, two, one. Oh, don't bog. Don't bog. It bogged. Got him again. So it's the AE86, what's going on, Ben? Ah. Um, what's your excuse this time? No excuses. To be fair, I mean, you guys are making great launches. I mean, that's about as good as I can get off the line with this thing. I've tried two different ways, both failed. It just bogs. It basically spins its tires off the line and then bogs down and you guys just go forward like vultures. I'll tell you what I'm doing. I've got traction off. I've got bugger all revs on the handbrake and then just accelerating. That's my trick, Ben. I've given you the detail. Try again. Three, two, one. Oh, for Pete's sake. Bit of a spin there. Woohoo! We're off! <laughs> oh, come on! Did he use my technique? So I started in the way you're doing it now. I've tried it with the traction off, with it on. It's the same problem each time. It just bogs and won't go. Well, that one, perhaps because it's lighter and it maybe it has got more torque than this, it just gets going. This car's a bit heavier than yours, but it's got quite a bit more torque, 250 compared to 200 newton meters. So that's quite a jump, considering it's only like 30 kilos heavier. Well, there you go. The launch on that ain't great. It's obvious that they've done more than just tune the engine. Maybe they've done some more with the suspension as well, and it's just putting the power down well and maybe the upgrade to Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tyres. Did he beat the A86? Eventually. To be fair, he's been nailing me every time. It's quite consistent and depressing, but um, it was close. It was probably the closer of the three. So then what exactly happened? Well, the GR86 won, completing the standing quarter mile in 14.6 seconds. The GT86 came second, taking 16.5 seconds, and the AE86 was last, crossing the line in 16.9 seconds. Seeing as you struggle so much getting that car off the line, despite being a professional. What would you like to do? A rolling quarter mile, starting in first gear. So it takes that initial launch out of the equation. Yes, please. Well, I'm being generous. Would you like to tell everybody about your own YouTube channel where they can see you getting up to crazy stuff? I think you're putting a lap time in something around the old Top Gear test track, haven't you? I have. Yep. So over on Ben Collins Drives, I've been uh, doing some good fun reviews and went back to the Top Gear track, which was wicked um, in my Praga. So yeah, let's, let's get you around there yourself. We should do that. Go check it out. Go subscribe there. All right. Ready, everybody on me. Stay level. Bit of wheel spin there. This is so much quicker. You can really see the difference. But I beat the old codger at least. Really see the difference. Oh my gosh, you can really see the difference between the performance of these two engines, can't you, Ben? Yeah, the power band on this is really fragile. Any small thing you get wrong, it really punishes you, you just lose momentum. Whereas yours seems so strong.
400 cc extra 34 horsepower more which isn't loads but it's that torque 250 newton meters and i think it's just a much wider spread of torque as well which makes it so much easier anyway a86 considering 20 years between the gt and the ae it's not that far behind is it and it's giving away like half a liter i am so impressed by this car i know it's famous for just being brilliant on a twisty mountain road and the last thing i expected it to be good at is drag race but it has kept you guys honest i'm so impressed by it fyi it hasn't kept me honest at all i was just way ahead mate acknowledge that please i think that car of yours is, is wicked it's the car that this always was meant to be in a way they've just honed it into perfection the man's got it right okay now we're going for a rolling race from 50 miles an hour cars in third gear three two one go oh look at that that's interesting look at it just gapping the gt keeps on gapping matt is just loving it he's up there gloating Now, Ben, that says it all, because your car should have been in its power band there, and this just walked away, didn't it? Yeah. I mean, the old Codger, I think that was where it was weakest. Pure power basis, it just couldn't keep up, could it? No, but you can really see the torque benefit of this new engine, this 2.4, over that 2.0-litre in the GT86. Where is the power band on that car, do you know? Where does it feel? Was 4.5 about right? For this, that's about it. It is a brief fleeting moment. And I think what's great with the one you're driving is it's just that much more versatile. It's all through the red range, isn't it? It really is. Now, if you'd like to see me drag race some GR Supras, including a Mark IV Supra, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below. If not, stay with me. We're going to do a brake test. So we're going to cruise at 70 miles an hour. And when we reach that line, we're going to do a full emergency stop. And we'll see which car stops in the shortest distance. Both the GT86 and the GR86 have ABS. Obviously, the old AE86 doesn't. So he's going to require a bit more skill not to lock up his brakes. We're just going to do a full emergency stop. Let's see what happens. Here comes the line. Well, there we go. So the two modern cars stopped in very similar distances because similar weight, similar chassis and ABS. Whereas the old car without ABS, you can really see the benefit of ABS, can't you? I was surprised by that, but yes, I think if the track had been dry, he'd have stopped a lot shorter, even with the wheels locked. But in the wet, you're right, it's just doubled his braking distance, hasn't it? And that is why all new cars have had to have ABS for blooming ages. That's the reason there. Anyway, if you're after a sporty car that's a bit more practical than these, I found one through CarWow with an interesting offer on it. If you want to find out what the car is and the offer, click on the pop-out banner up there for the link in the description below.